Hello, let's try to understand how to graph a rational function. Well, rational function, as you know, is a ratio of polynomials, and the denominator cannot be equal to zero because that makes the rational function undefined. So, first thing which we should do is to find discontinuities in our rational function, and that we can do only by factoring it. So, let's factor this rational function. So we can write this as fx equals to x square minus 2x. If we can factor out x, we get x minus 2. And denominator, x is common, right? And then we'll have quadratic equation inside. That will simplify our job of factoring. So the numerator is x times x minus 2. And denominator we are looking for a product of minus 6 and sum of plus 1. So the numbers are 3 and 2. Which one should be positive? Well, the bigger number, 3, right? So I can write this as x plus 3 times x minus 2. And at this time, we should check also, right? So we get 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, x squared. And we take away 2 from 3, we get 1. So this is just the right thing, right? Now here, we should write the restrictions, correct? Restrictions are that, let me put it in red, that x is not equal to, you know, 0, correct? Let me write here, restrictions. So restrictions are <clears throat> that x cannot be 0 because denominator each factor you know we have to look for x is not equal to 0 and second one is this one is if you equate to 0 we have x plus 3 equals to 0 that means x cannot be equal to minus 3 and here x cannot be equal to 2 right so these are our three restrictions now these restrictions can lead to either vertical asymptotes or holes how will you get that well if we have a common factor in numerator and denominator, then we get a whole, right? So x and x, we have a common factor. This will cancel out. So this will yield a whole, right? And uh, x minus 2 and x minus 2 will cancel out. So that will also give us a whole, right? And this one will remain, and that will give us a vertical asymptote. Let me write VA for it. So vertical asymptote at x equals to minus 3. Perfect. So, we can say here discontinuities are it's good to describe discontinuities because, you know, let's make things very clear so that we can make a very good graph, right? That we have whole at x equals to 0 and uh, x equals to 2 and we have vertical asymptote at x equals to minus 3 and our final equation uh, which we got here now is fx equals to uh, so we have nothing in the numerator except for number 1 and x plus 3 in the denominator oh, that's a very good simplification so that will make our job very simple right where x is not equal to 0 2 and minus 3 so now we have our simplified expression, which is exactly the same as the big rational function we started with, correct? Why is it exactly the same? Because we have restricted all the rest restrictions. We have shown all the restrictions. If we don't show this, then they are different because this practically has only one restriction, x equals to minus 3. It doesn't reflect the other two, right? So other two were because of the factors which got cancelled and which will yield a whole. Now, let's see how to graph it. To graph this function, uh, how will the graph look like? So if you look at the basic function, fx equals to 1 over x plus 3, so we have a reciprocal function, right? So it's kind of a transformed reciprocal function. Is that okay? 
uh, and what is the transformation? Transformation is three units left. So that's the kind of transformation, right? And holes, right? Hole at x equals to zero. So let us say that so what is the precise position of hole? So we can say that hole is at x equals to zero means if I plug in zero here I get one over three. So that is one position of a hole. And the second one is at two. So if I plug in two here, so one over two plus three will give me uh, five, right? One over five. So these are my holes. And then I have a vertical asymptote at x equals to minus three, right? So these are our restrictions, correct? So now let's try to sketch a graph. And uh, let me just draw some lines on this graph paper. This is our y-axis. And then let's say this is our x-axis. Correct. Now, first and foremost is the vertical asymptote. x equals to minus 3. So, minus 1 is this point, And minus 2 and minus 3. So, let me draw this vertical asymptote here. So, I'm making a rough sketch. Basically, these are the steps we should be following to make a good sketch. 0, 1 over 3 is our hole, right? So at 0, and this is like 1, correct? So 1 over 3 will be less than half, and let me put it here for the time being, hole, right? And then another one is at 2, 1 over 5. So this is 1, and this is 2. 1 over 5 will be quite close to this, and let me just put it here, correct? So basically, it's a 1 over x function, and uh, then we can select some points, correct? So let me write on the function here, we are looking for a function fx equals to 1 over x plus 3, uh, where x is not equal to 0, 2, and minus 3, correct? So those points we have already shown. At minus 3, we have this vertical asymptote, right? So let me just say vertical asymptote at minus 3, x equals to minus 3, right? And these are our holes, right? So this is a hole at 0, 1 over 3, and then another hole we have at 2, 1 over 5. Is it okay? Correct. So these are our holes. Well, only for clarity, I'm just labeling it like this, but you need not do it. It really makes it messy. Okay. And now, let me join it. Now, to get you some points, because, uh, well, we can make a table of values, correct? So we know at x equals to minus 3, we have a vertical asymptote. Good points are starting from minus 3 onwards, right? So uh, let, let's draw some table. Let me put some table here itself. And uh, minus 3 is a point where we cannot go. So we can go to minus 2, for example, and say at minus 2, it will be 1 over minus 2 plus 3 will get 1. Is it okay? And at minus 1, it will be half. Now, this side, if we go, we minus 3, we cannot go, right? So, minus 3, we does not exist, right? Uh, it's not in our domain. Minus 4, minus 4 will give us minus 1. And minus 5 will give us minus half. Well, the function does have a very good symmetry, you can see, right? Now, so these are our points, correct? These are points, correct? So have we come here, this is the value half, and this is the value two. And so we got here, this value, and that value, correct? So these are our values, and you know, what is the end behavior? If x approaches, now let me show you end behavior here. So if x approaches positive infinity, then 1 over a very large positive number will also approach 0, right? 0. And it will be from positive side, correct? When x approaches negative infinity, y again approaches 0. But if it is negative infinity, the function will be from the negative side. That's kind of important. That's the end behavior, okay? So basically what we are saying is that here it approaches from this side and here it approaches from this side, correct? 
So now it's a good time to sketch our graph. So let's do it like this. Okay, and this side is continuous. So let's go from the point 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, right? And join the rest of the points. That should be okay. One more thing which you should look into is how does the graph behave at or close to vertical asymptote, correct? So if I have a value which is on the right side of x equals to minus 3, then we get positive values, right? If I have minus 2.99, right, then it will be a huge, like, 100, right, plus, right? So it is... When you approach, so we sometimes write this as, as x approaches minus 3 from positive side, right? Then y actually approaches positive infinity. And when x approaches minus 3 from negative side, if I approach from this side, then I approach a large value, but that large value is negative infinity. So that's the behavior near the vertical asymptote, right? So this is our behavior of the graph. near vertical asymptote, right? So th these are very, very important things to look into when you graph a rational function. I hope you understand the concept. Let me uh, tell you once again what we did here and see how did we finally get this graph. So we basically started with our function, which was fx equals to x squared minus 2x over x cube plus x square minus 6x, right? Now, the first step always is to find the discontinuities and therefore the domain of the function, right? Now, we found that by factoring our function. So when we factored an equated denominator to 0, then we found the points which do not belong to the domain of the function. So those points were 0, 2, and minus 3. So let me put now the domain. So right domain of the function will be that x belongs to real numbers where x is not equal to 0, 2, and minus 3. Correct. So that's our domain. The second thing is we should analyze our discontinuities to get a very good graph. So we found that when you factor this out then we have a common factor x here and x here. You see x is common here and that x is cancel out leading to a whole. That whole value is 1 over 3. How? Well, we first cancelled out that common factor x and then we found that x minus 2 was also a common factor. When you factor x here, you get x minus 2, right? So after cancelling x minus 2, this function got reduced to, or simply phi 2, 1 over x plus 3, where the holes were at 0 and 2, and a vertical asymptote is at minus 3, correct? Now, from this function, we can say, if we plug in the value 0, then what value do we expect? We expect a value 1 over 3. That's our one of the holes, right? So we make a circle at that point, indicating that it's not filled up and it is not in our domain. Then we plug in 2 here to check the second hole. So 1 over 2 plus 3 will give us 1 over 5. So at 2, the value of hole should be 1 over 5 and we made that hole, correct? Then this discontinuity is for vertical asymptote. So we draw a vertical asymptote here. Now. We can plot some points and of our function and find the value of the function. Good points to start are close. We let's keep vertical asymptote right in the center and go left and right of that. So our vertical asymptote was at minus three. So we took points as minus two, minus one, and minus four, minus five, and found those critical points and joined them. Before joining, it is very important to also observe the end behavior. 
end behavior is when x approaches plus infinity and mi minus infinity. In both cases we saw that y approaches 0 but when x approaches positive infinity y approaches 0 from positive side it is in quadrant 1 and that's where it is and when approaches minus infinity y is approaching from negative side it's in quadrant 3 and there it is correct and then we looked into the behavior of our graph near the vertical asymptote so if you plug in a value which is very close to minus 3 plus slightly on the right side of it that means minus 3 plus it means on the right side then we get a y large value which is positive so the graph approaches positive infinity and when you approach x from the negative side that means on the left side of the vertical asymptote let's say a value minus 3.001 in that case you will see that y approaches negative infinity and so we mark these arrows for positive and negative infinity right negative infinity approaching positive and now it's a good point to join all these points with a smooth curve and when you do that this is kind of graph you get remember not to fill in the holes okay I think you understand the process fairly well now and if not go through the video once again and if there are any doubts post your doubts and we can discuss them that will be great okay thanks a lot